this is the guitar that I rebuilt on the day that I was going to go out and rent a car and couldn't get a car and I saw it hanging there in uh, such sad shape so I took it to the shop and had it rebuilt. Um, I just needed to put a tuning key on and I got new strings for it and cleaned the neck up so it almost looks like a brand new guitar and it plays really nice now. shower and I feel like a human being again I need to try to remake some of the guitar video um, <clears throat> so here's here's the story I, I was telling it on the way with the guitar downtown the other day but the wind was so bad you couldn't actually hear anything on the entire recording because it was just blown away like it does so much um, <clears throat> but there is an old Dobro knockoff hanging on the wall of the hostel where I'm staying and uh, it looked like at one time people had played it quite a bit because <laughs> the fretboard was just just solid with just greasy icky buildup <clears throat> and it was missing some pieces and but the guitar itself was nice and straight and you know it looks like that people had come you know in groups and they would sit around and play guitar and it was a nice guitar and it was just, it had just become decoration. So, <clears throat> I didn't have anything to do that day because I didn't get the car. And uh, I decided that the car wasn't the way to go after all because, you know, it was going to be too expensive and I really didn't know where I was going, but I wasn't actually thinking about that. So, I just told them, I said, hey, do you want me to fix your guitar? And they thought it was a pretty weird request that some one of their guests would want to, you know, fix their guitar, you know, take it to the shop and get it repaired. And, you know, it was going to be probably, I'd talked to the guys at the guitar shop a couple of days before about it to see, you know, how much a tuning key would cost for it. And they said they could repair it for about 150 bucks. Well, I mean, maybe in Iceland it's different, but in the United States that guitar probably <laughs> wouldn't have been worth 150 bucks in that condition. So, I was going to try it anyway, and I was just maybe going to try to do some horse trading. So, I had a t-shirt, you know, that I got down at the uh, crossroads, you know, at First Fridays. And I'd never worn it before. And it was one of the little artist t-shirts, you know, that they were uh, selling on the street corner. And I thought, well, maybe I can trade this, you know, and maybe uh, work up some goodwill, you know, because it is a youth hostel. You know, and they allow people to stay there cheap, you know, people that spend money in Iceland. So I, <clears throat> they kind of laughed when I first told them <laughs> that I wanted to fix their guitar, but they let me go ahead and try. So, you know, this was, I got some more video that shows about my adventure with the guitar. And I'll probably do what I'm doing now to fill in some of the weaker links because I didn't do a good job documenting it. Um, so the footage that I shot was pretty much unusable, so uh, I, I just mostly have to tell you about it, you know, because you can't really see any of the actual thing. Um, <clears throat> I will learn to, you know, be more upfront and interview people, um, but I'm not there yet, obviously. So uh, just check out the video. Okay, so if you are wondering why I'm walking down a street in Iceland with the guitar in my hand. Um, because I talked to some guys at a uh, 
guitar shop yesterday about the uh, guitar they had hanging on the wall at the hospital. One thing I forgot about <clears throat> on this mission with the guitar is the hill I had to climb to get to the guitar shop. And after three days of walking, you'd think it'd be a piece of cake, but it's not. And I found it again, right across the street from Bingo. Well, let's hope they go for it and I didn't waste my time. Uh, first of all, with the odd request of taking somebody's guitar to have it fixed and then walking all this way. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, sad. You know, I tried, but they couldn't, they didn't have the tuning key for it. So, you know, that's uh, not necessarily a blown deal yet. Uh, they actually are sending me down the street to the place I passed, and the guy actually builds guitars. So we'll see what he can do and how much he's going to want for it. <laughs> and, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe he'll trade, maybe... Uh, uh, I wind up going back empty-handed because I couldn't complete my mission, but at least I tried, you know? I mean, that's that's the whole thing. I think sometimes uh, you got to try to do something maybe that's a little extraordinary every once in a while. Yeah, this is uh, Gunnar Orn, and it's a guitar uh, guitar builder down the street from the shop where I originally went to get the guitar fixed. And he has some amazing guitars, truly. <clears throat> but it looks like they're gonna hook me up with the tuning key. I take it you're Gunnar. Oh. Are you Gunner? Yes. He's going to be. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice and I really thank you folks for doing this. I mean, it's, it's actually not my guitar. It's for, um, it's actually for the youth hostel that I'm staying at. They oh. were obviously playing it at one time and, you know, it, it broke and nobody ever did anything about it. So it just hung on the wall. Yeah, it's a shame because it's good to have a guitar. Yeah, and you know, working there. Still flying around. And... <clears throat> Your shop is absolutely amazing. Thank you. I'm a horrible guitarist, but I'm a, I I love the instrument. So. Yeah. Well, you know. So this is like guitar heaven. I should get a screwdriver to fix that. <laughs> you got one of the smaller Phillips. Yeah. I'd have to go in a bit deeper. Oh, I don't think I couldn't get that. Oh, the Yeah, dropping screws. It is actually easy for doing flat. Okay. All right, I just got out of Gunnar Orn's shop and uh, friendliest people you will ever meet. Not only did they uh, take a look at the guitar without even a hesitation, but they, they just put a new tuning key on. They didn't charge me for it or anything. It was amazing. Um, so if you ever need a guitar fixed or uh, you want to buy a really good guitar because he makes some fantastic guitars, uh, go see Gunnar Orn in Reykjavik. 
You know, it just occurred to me that I probably should have gotten a before and after shot of the guitar. Um, <clears throat> maybe they'll clean it up and string it for me, I don't know. But yeah, before it was missing a tuning key. There was just a hole there in the head of the guitar, so you couldn't even put six strings on it. Um, and yeah, it, just, it had just become decoration, uh, which was sad because even though it's not a big name brand guitar, it's still a nice little Dobro knockoff. And, you know, people obviously enjoy playing with playing it because the fretboard was so dirty. So I couldn't stand to see it hanging there on the wall like that, you know, in a place where people would get so much enjoyment out of it. So I just decided I'd have it fixed. And, uh, you know, I, I talked to the guitar shop about how much it would cost, and they said about 150 bucks. And I'm like, well, first of all, I'm a tourist eating $30 meals in Reykjavik. Um, I don't have $150 to spend on somebody else's guitar. So I figured, what the hell? Maybe I can do something else. Maybe I can trade. So uh, we'll see what happens. To like my my sob story of the poor uh, the the poor hostel that needs a fixed guitar. So. Um, well, I'm almost there so so far so good you know success uh, I got the tuning key and that's that's a big part of it because now anybody can restring it all right we had success <laughs> I didn't really lose anything in the deal except for I bought the strings um, because the boss wasn't around they weren't gonna trade for a t-shirt but I don't know if I wanted to trade a t-shirt for <laughs> strings that cost less than a meal in Reykjavik <clears throat> but uh, Mission accomplished. I mean, I can go home now and, and restring it, and uh, you know maybe people will uh, get a chance to enjoy playing it for a few years until some doofus breaks a string thinking he can tune it. All right, little side tour. Um, I'm walking back with the guitar. So yeah, I've been carrying a guitar around Reykjavik all day. Um, people are probably wondering what the goofy guy with the guitar is doing uh, but you know I'm down near the waterfront again because that's where the street that I go up to the hostel um, meets the city and right there is the bay so I've been trying to get a shot of the mountains on the other side of the bay like since I've been here but every time I come down they're covered in clouds except the time where my phone ran out of batteries so guess what I got a phone full of batteries and I'm actually down here so I'm just gonna take a little side tour and see if I can get a shot of the mountains before I go back Alright, so I'll go home and I'll uh, clean it up, restring it, and then I'm going to have to go to the brew pubs because I, I drink a little beer and I think if I missed out on the brew pubs in, in Reykjavik, um, that would be like uh, missing out on, you know, like the... Uh, the golden circle so which I'm going to tomorrow um, I didn't rent a car and at this point um, checking out the car situation it was just gonna be ridiculous because I wasn't gonna get out of it what I wanted to so instead I took a $99 tour that's gonna take me around the golden circle tomorrow um, which is funny because I will probably put in the video that I made earlier about saying that tours are for the infirm. <laughs> I guess you can count me amongst the infirm now. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. I need to visit some place. Try to leave it a little better than it was before. <laughs> <laughs>